very, very important. Um, it's a very, very important point. And as I said, uh, we did an audio. We did an audio about um, the role and importance of Ras Teferi, of of law enforcement, not just law. Now we we're speaking about when we say law in context, we're speaking of the Torah as once lost but now found Beta Israel. So we want to entitle this um this particular vid and perhaps maybe an expanded lecture. It's on it's on law and law enforcement, the sense of Torah and Torah enforcement. You understand? What do you mean by Torah enforcement? We're speaking about living by our own God given laws and not by the laws of the Gentiles. Now, we're, we're in a dispensation, you know, and this dispensation that we have been in for 400 plus years, of course, the, the time is re really already up. The time was up at 400 years. And we know that from, from the first book of Torah, which is Genesis chapter 15, um, the whole chapter is really important. So Genesis chapter 15 basically is the chapter and the exact verse, just to document this, let's go to, let's go to the book of Genesis for a moment. Let's start out with the first book because everybody want to know, well, what's happening in the end, the end of the world, the end of the age, the end, the end. The... Well, what happened in the beginning? As it was what in the beginning so shall it be in the end. That's a divine response. But, of course, humanity has been dumbed down, you know, has been dumbed down to where even the, the, the youths really don't really know the truth even about 40 years ago, much less 400 years ago. So here in Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15 it is at verse 13 and verse 14. The whole chapter in context is good, but for, for, for this particular lecture and teaching, we're going to focus on verses 13 and 14. And it says, And he said to, and Yah, El Shaddai, said to Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed, speaking of thy race, and we're speaking essentially to the once lost but now found Beta Israel, we're speaking to the to the so-called black people or, or the niggers, you know what I'm saying? We're speaking this message is for the niggers. See, people that don't want to recognize, you know what I'm saying, that's what we have been called because we've been stripped of our identity. To call yourself an African hyphenated American, that's just a, a very temporal thing to do, you know what I'm saying? But really it does not hold spiritual water. In other words, you know what I'm saying? It's a political, it's a temporal thing. It's kind of a PC thing, so forth and so on. But we have to get beyond so-called PC, you know, political, political correctness, really political co-and-tell-pro, if, if the truth must be told. It's a political co-and-tell-pro because that means, well, the black churches are not going to really speak the truth. And this is one of the reasons why I want to speak to the youth and, 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 and the young folks out there because – they really don't know what they just don't know. And perhaps this word would reach some of them and others will be able to communicate to others of them to put down the heat. You know, you know what I mean? Put down the heat. You know what I'm saying? Put down the heat. Put down the heat and pick up Torah. Pick up the Torah. Pick up the Orit. You know what I'm saying? Rechnu. You know what I'm saying? Know thyself. Learn the half of the story that you haven't been told. Because when everybody looks around at, oh, look what's going on with this generation of black people with their pants sagging, hanging down, and all this confusion and broken homes and broken families, so forth and so on. Ones are acting like, well, you know, they're trying to demonize us as a people. You know what I'm saying? Something's wrong with black folks. Black folks just can't get it together. Well, of course, if they're not going to deal with their past, if they're not going to deal with their true story, if they're not going to begin to pick up, read, and dissect documents like this, you understand how to make a slave. You know, let's make a slave, the Wooly Lynch, Slick Willie. Slick Willie don't want you to read this. You understand? Slick Willie want to tell you this is a fake. But when you read this, 
and then you start to recognize the principles in here and see what's going on today in this present time in 2012. You know, we just saw, I think, a law and order, one of these law and order shows and everything where they had um, two different kind of cases going on. One was these white folks, right, abducting, you know, abducting, um, 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 white woman, white girls and everything and having babies, but, but this crazy white guy, like Slave Master, he only wanted to have, he only wanted to have, um, I think, girls, so all the boys, he would kind of like dump them or, you know, put them in front of a church or something like that. And, and, and when he finally rescued one of the women who was being held captive, you know, because they was they was holding her for like years, some one woman over a year, because you know the the whole birthing cycle to get pregnant and have the child, so forth and so on. And when they went down to find out well where these people were holding, you know, saying holding their 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 their, their, their captives, you know, what I mean, it was in some underground dungeon basement. And the first thing I thought about was they were doing the same thing in slavery. Oh, wow. Now, because they can't do it to black folks, you see white folks doing it to other white folks. And then the other flip story of this Law and Order, order um, episode, the other flip story was um, the, the female protagonist character, Olivia, right? She has a brother, and, uh, you know, they, they didn't know each other until like five years ago, no family secrets, so forth and so on. You know, whenever it's like white folks in these movies and they have like family problems, it's always like, you know, it's not so bad. Even when it is bad, it's, it's much different, you know. So this kind of demonization, you understand, of, of black people continues. So when our false leaders and teachers say, don't, don't think about the past, well, if you don't know your roots, where you really come from, and the fact that some things have not been done away with, the only thing they've been is covered up. You know, we're told not to, you know, not to look at those sort of things. Now they're charging black folks with all type of so-called bias and hate crimes, so forth and so on, and the real racism, prejudice, discrimination, exploitation, downpression is still going on, and we wonder why. Black folks, you know what I mean, why we, when we look at our health, why, you know, stressed out, high blood pressure, you know, broken homes and families, so, because we never did the work completely, not we, but our ancestors never fulfilled what they were supposed to do, you understand, not just to so-called um, get to eat in some cheap nasty, racist-owned restaurant, you know, or to sit in the front of the bus or something like that. Come on, people. Come on, people. You understand? But that's the false bill of goods that was sold, sold to us. This is why there's a judgment for the so-called black church. There's a judgment on the black church. And even the Whitney incident, and, and the, what we regard as a, as, as a murder kind of scenario, so forth and so on, like the others. But, but the real tragedy is, you understand, is that the, the, the so-called black church is preparing victims' lambs. You know, imagine like a barn full of lambs, and they're preparing lambs for the slaughter, for massa, in, in a whole different scheme of things. But anyway, the main message is right here is that how this episode, okay, I didn't tell you about the next, the, the next story was, okay, Olivia's brother, right, um, he has a black woman, right, you know, a black, his, his woman's a black woman, I think they have adopted a child, and maybe they had a child, something like that, the, you know, the main detail is this, is that um, they got their children taken away, it's something like that story of the black couple, the man and the woman, or the woman, they mainly put the woman out there, but, but her and her, hus her husband or her fiancé, but the baby father basically, had um, um, taken their children back, but they call it kidnapped, from a foster, foster home. I'm sure you probably heard about it, and it's out there. The black woman that, the black woman and man, but they put her face forward on it. Then later on they said that, well, he was, you know, he was, compl and they had this whole big amber alert, so forth and so on, where they can use any sort of, 
where they manipulate the law. You understand the law. See, when we're talking about Torah, when we're talking about the Bible, and we're talking about law and, and, and the importance of Torah, the importance of, 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 of the law, this is the foundation of our sovereignty, the foundation of our sovereignty as a people. Really, it, it helps us to get out of this Babylon. You know what it says to come out of Babylon? And, and it says that princes shall come out of uh, out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. We explain that that prince is Bamarinya in the Amharic Bible, in the Metzhaf Kedus of the King of Kings, or, or what we call the Book of the Seven Seals. The word prince is in the Mezmur Dawit, the Psalms of David. It is the word Mequanent, which is a Ge'ez, or an Ethiopic word. It's the plural of Mekonin or Mequanent. Mequenin, or as you might know, Mekonin, that was the son of man's earthly father's name. But that Mekonin, 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 basically means a judge, an officer. It's really an officer, an officer who is a judge. You remember just recently in the Yotor, the Yotor, the Jethro um, Torah portion, I think, was the seven, was it the 17th um the 17th Torah portion, let's just confirm. I think that we are correct. And, yes, Yotor, which was Exodus chapter 18 and 1 to Exodus chapter 20 and 23, it actually explains that foundation, you understand, that foundation of preparing a people to be sovereign. You know, people say, why are the black youths, you know, more black youths, um, or black people, really, in general, but especially the youth, in particular the males, have been killed by so-called black-on-black violence. That's one of the curses for disobedience. That's one of the curses right there in the scripture for disobedience. And here's what's so very interesting. You look at that, and you look at every other people in the whole world, and all over the world, and you will find that with no other people except this lost sheep, so-called black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean, is, it, it are the signs, all of the signs of the curse of disobedience being manifested on a continual, a daily basis. There's not one day that you won't see uh, a, a, a whole bunch of correspondences of what is in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68. Some may want to dismiss it, you understand? But those are the ignorant, those are the foolish, those are the disagreeable. Jah, you know, Jah already has said what's going to happen to the disagreeable. But we're putting out a message saying to the, to the, the black so-called gangsters, gangbangers, you niggas running around just shooting up your... Yo, put down the heat for a moment. That might be your call. But put down the heat for a moment and pick up Torah. Start to learn the B-I-B-L-E before it's, all, before it's all over and before it's too late. It's, it's very, it's crucial, it's fundamental. You see, we shouldn't even be doing this, in a sense, or one of the few doing this, if the black churches were doing their jobs. So there's a judgment there. We'll point out in the scripture. We'll show you the real, the real world signs that are being manifested even right now. Whitney Houston and the whole so-called Baptist, a uh, Baptist Christian, you know what I'm saying? Isn't John the Baptist? It's not Christ the Baptist. It's Jesus the Christ. It's the Church of God in Christ, not the Church of the Baptist. But we'll deal with that Southern Negroism. You understand that that modern day um, step and fletch it up in the pulpit, is bull pit. You understand? You know where they give the bull to the people. You understand? And only speak of a a a a material, so called salvation, you understand, a prosperity, so-called gospel. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Jah wants us to prosper. But there's a reason, you understand, there's a reason for our prosperity. You understand? And when we look into the scripture, let's just go here, 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 here really quick, brothers and sisters, you know, we're not against prosperity. Of course we're not against prosperity, but everything must be in order, or guess what? It's out of order. And that's what we see in the black community. Things are out of order. Look at all this violence happening in the black neighborhood, you understand, and in the black communities. Where is the church? 
where is the church? Everybody's opening some church, but where is the real outreach, you know what I'm saying, of the church? And you see, white supremacy knows this. You know what I'm saying? White supremacy, but you know what? Jah is not dead. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Jah see and Jah know and Jah will punish these things. But you see, when Jah does things, especially of this nature, he works through his servants. And the fact that nothing has changed or seemingly changed is because we're not serving him. We don't know what he requires to establish his kingdom. You know the Our Father prayer. You understand? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. You understand? On earth as it is in heaven. Who do you think is doing that will? Who do you think is supposed to be the church? The church folks. You understand? Because they're the ones who say they're serving the Lord. You understand? All they're serving is Masa. They're serving Masa, not the Moshiach. It's clear they're not serving the Moshiach. You know what I'm saying? They're serving master. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and John's about to end that church age. As he said, he will return and establish his own church. He will, he, will, he will build his own church. And the curious thing is this. If the church is already doing what it's supposed to be doing, why when he returns, as they say, or he comes again, would he have to establish his own church if the church was doing its job? You know what I'm saying? And not just, you know, not just standing on a street corner shouting at people. I'm talking about the real practical work. Do you know that a lot of these social functions in society, you know, like, like the, the, the orphanages, the homeless shelters, a lot of these other kind of, even hospitals and other things, were, were outgrowths of churches, many of them European, not all, but outgrowth of churches and even synagogues and, and, and some of the, you know, the Jews who were more um, uh, philanthropic, altruistic, you know what I'm saying, who were more true, as they would say, believers, you understand, they established these functions as a way of what some call um, um, zakat, you understand, or even tzidik, you know, righteousness and, and charity and, and alms and, and doing for others. It's like even the Catholics. We may say, fire button, fire button the Pope, fire button the Catholics. Okay, for doctrinal, theological reasons and certain spiritual wickedness in their high places, yes. But then on another level, too, you understand, some of y'all, and, and, and we know this from being out there, have gone and turned to some Catholic institutions that were there to do certain basic charity thing, and you can turn to your Baptist church, you can turn to your Pentecostal, your Methodist, or your black folks, whatever. You come in there and say, I, I, you know, I always come, I always, you know, give an offer and so forth and so on. Sometimes even a very, you know, I, you know, I, I, get, I tithe and everything. Um, I, I can't pay my rent now, you know. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to, you poor? They're going to run you out the church. So what will a lot of our people who are still immature and unstable, what's going to happen? One thing I've noticed over and over in my ministry and in speaking to brothers and sisters out there, young ones out there, ones out there, some of them out there banging, doing a lot of stuff. And it, but, but they never fake the funk like so-called religious folks. Even some of them youths out there on the street who, who think they're not going to live to see their next birthday. And, that's, you know, that's a damn shame, man. You understand? When you really start to reason with them, yo, it's like they, they want to learn. You understand? And they're surprised. What? You mean somebody will actually sit down and, and we, can, we can reason on the Bible? Or you got some videos? You got something else? Yeah, I'll check. You, you know what I'm saying? There's a thirst for that. And that thirst is not being met. And what's interesting is this. It says because the so-called parents or the older generation that could have prepared the younger generation, what we see going on in the, in the black communities is almost 40, 40 years of apathy, 40 years of, 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 of down, low down, dirty apathy. You understand? Not all Christians, not all black churches, but unfortunately, the vast majority 
You know what I'm saying? It's maybe 5% of the black churches out there that really are from the heart intending to fulfill, you understand, the will of God in Christ. I don't mean they're doing everything because they might not have the means and resources, but they still are aiming for what the Savior standard to fulfill that. So in, in the prophetic word, it says something. It says that if you do not prepare his children, Speaking about the, if you don't teach them this word, you understand, then the blood and the violence, they will kill themselves. The Bible basically explains that, especially for us who we are as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. You know, this is why, you know, hearing about like the bloods and the crypts and like, damn, man, why this, you know, there must be some answer to it. So as we begin to study the scripture more and more, the answer's right there. The answer's right there. I, I mean, people say, well, 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 what you got to do? First, you got to recognize, acknowledge the truth, and then act on that knowledge. And the first thing is to teach it and preach it. But nobody's teaching and preaching. Say, oh, you can't do nothing about these youths nowadays. Oh, such and such. It's almost like people saying, let them, let them just die. Why? You understand? Why? You know what I'm saying? There's a whole generation that's on the verge of being lost because you have another generation who went down to Egypt. You see, before we were on that integration and all that kind of so-called civil rights and everything, the black community was so much more holistic. Yes, we might not have had the latest school books and the latest school room and resources was low, so forth and so on. But still the spirit of the people, even with less, was greater. Now we have greater, but the spirit is less. I mean, look at some of these court shows, law shows. Look at some of the, 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 the stories about, about what niggas are really fighting and arguing over. And then read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68, just to start out, just to start out. And the brothers and sisters that, you know, have a little trouble with their reading, it's no shame in your game. Go and, you know, go to one of the GED programs, man. You understand? Even if you're a big so-called grown person, so what? Once you learn to read, you're gonna have the key. You have the key to open so many doors. You understand? Stop letting some of these fake friends and the rest of them make you feel bad. Oh, oh, nigga, you can't read. You stupid. Then you know those are the kind of people you need to kind of like, you know, just like, just like, you know, back up off of or or, or tell them to go. You understand? Um. So there's a reason for prosperity. There is a reason for prosperity, and we find this reason for prosperity right in his word. If we go to chapter, if we go to chapter, where is it, chapter, chapter 8, you understand, of um, Deuteronomy. You know, a lot of these prosperity preachers, they like to grab this verse out, 8 and 18, where it says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear to thy fathers as it is this day. See, what they try to do while, while telling the people, black folks, that you're Gentiles, the preacher is trying to appropriate, you know what I'm saying, and trying to have you miss, this is what, what's called misappropriation, to appropriate this scripture, to use this scripture as, as, as a kind of a spiritual mantra, you know what I'm saying, as, 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 as like a hekau, like as, um, for lack of, not magic, but functioning in a sense like um, magic, you know what I'm saying, like a mantra. You say, say, read that, the Lord, he gives us the power to get wealth. Let me establish the covenant, right? Wealth, wealth, wealth. But they focus more on the wealth, wealth, wealth. You understand? And so the covenant, this is the church. The church is the covenant. It's the new covenant. They call it the New Testament. You know, and they go through all that, right? But then if you read this chapter, if you read the rest of the chapter, right, and you read the context, this is speaking about a people who are coming out of bondage, right? 
and who were heading towards the promised land, real land, their own land, not land they had to buy from the federal or the local government who stole it by murdering and killing native people, stole their land. So basically when you say, I want to get a little piece of America, you are sharing in stolen property. I know it's not a popular thing to say, you know, but Jai's not dead. You, you know, was, but if you want to mess with Jai, you, you know, or, or, or his, his things, he has the power, you know, he has the power to kill you. He has the power to revive you. Babylon can't do those things. Babylon is not, is, is, is not able to do really, really anything. You, you know what I mean? Besides making vain imagination and make-believe. Babylon is very, very good at make-believe. You understand? But very poor, you understand, at the truth. And we have right here where it says, says, let's go up a couple of verses for a moment. Let's go up a couple of verses for a moment. It says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments. What do you hear in all these counterfeit, illegal Jehovah worship churches? We're not under the law. He did away with the commandments. You know, we're not under that. The only commandment is to love, to love, love, love. See, what they, what they want, want to do is say, um, I take this word, this one word out the commandment, love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy might, right? They take that one word out there. Then they take out the whole contextuality of it. You understand? And what most of the pa these pastors, fake counterfeit pastors who don't tell my people, you understand, John's people who they are, they take it out and they, and, they, and they just pimp it. They just pimp it. You understand? Uh, um, and we wonder why sometimes the men, you know, people always say, how come there's, there's more women in churches? Because women are more spiritual. Well, women are inclined spiritually in a, in a unique way vis-a-vis -vis men by their, by their intrinsic feminine nature, yes. But because many men kind of recognize that's some pimp game. That's basically a pimp game. You know, men who have the awareness of what pimp game is, you know, they recognize this is some pimp game. There's no empowerment there. You understand? Like, we're teaching the scripture. If we're wrong, somebody says, oh, no, you misquoted so forth and so on. You point to the scripture. It's not like, I'm the preacher. I'm a theologian. No, it's like, yo, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. You see what I'm saying? So there's no, there's no, there is we are brotherhood. You understand? We have one master, one God, one father. But here it says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping the commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Now, the Bible says something very interesting, right? Now, remember, we've talked about the law before, and, and, and we are entitling this entitling this and probably will do a couple of other portions as we go along. So hopefully this subject matter will build up. But after we saw this, um, the episode, you know, where they basically took, um, you know, took these children. Oh, I didn't even tell you the, the, the best, not the best part, but the main part, you understand, that they, 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 they the, the city took the children because the guy, he, he ran a traffic light and he had his interracial girlfriend, uh, girlfriend to be wife, his fiance, right? Um, she's black, he's white, right? And they had um, their children in the car, and he went past a, I guess a red light or whatever, blue a light or whatever like that. A racist police officer, you know, saying, Tip, not typical, but they, they're still out there. Let's not be fooled. Let's not be bemused. They didn't go nowhere because they were not defeated. You know what I'm saying? They were not defeated. You know, you know, I mean, you know, so emancipation just means to let you go from the hand, but still got you in, in heart and in mind. You understand? So you don't have chain on your hands and your feet, but it's still on your heart and your mind, you know? Um, so they, they, they ran the light, or he must have ran the light. They were writing him up for a ticket. Somehow the police officer you understand, says that he, had, he smelled a whiff of marijuana in the car, you, you know, and told him to empty his pockets. He found this joint there. And now the guy, he, was, he just had tooth, tooth surgery. 
he, he, he couldn't afford, you know, medicine, all these, you know, these pharmaceuticals. And so he was using that to help, um, not to relieve the pain, but he couldn't eat afterward, you know. You know, so and there's no marijuana. First of all, marijuana is not a drug, so forth and so on. We've, we've been through that basic level. But it's interesting how they are using these laws, you know, they are using these laws, how they're framing mischief by the law. And there's an interesting place in Scripture that actually says the same thing. I want you to actually note this, note this if you will. Because we're seeing this increasing happening. Now, what's interesting about that story, too, is, 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 is this. One, it had two basic stories. They do this a lot of times, but sometimes you can peep. There's a bigger picture in it. One story was about some white folks that couldn't have any children. So these people who were um, 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 kidnapping girls and, and impregnating it with this old, dirty white man seed, you know, these young white girls, and he had an older, you know, white woman who was a uh, nurse or something like that, and dovetailed that fictional story with the fact that the Kennedy, I think is, 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 is one of the RFK Kennedy Jr., how they're saying that he couldn't take his own child outside for a moment, that he's like kidnapping his own child. Now they have this you know, they have these weeping willow so-called nurses out there who are saying that, that they, you know, they, they are so, they want money. You know, basically, they want money, so forth and so on. You know, um, but these are, these are all signs, you understand, know of what is, not just what is to come, but what they intend to come forward. You know, and there's another message we want to do, and if you're watching this and the sisters, where are our midwives? Where are the sisters? See, the sisterhood must begin on, on, on levels like that, which are not just sisters gossiping, chit-chat like they're on The View or The Talk or something like that. No, that it's about maintaining that, that life of the community. You know what I'm saying? The new life, the life that's already here, there's a, there's a valuable role for, for the, the mothers, the daughters, the wives, um, and, and the sisters, you know what I'm saying? And when we thought about it, we said, what happened to all the midwife? And, you know, it makes you think like, well, like, like it's like once you go to the so-called hospital for such a thing, it's like they can put a chip in your child. They could do this with your child. You have almost no sort of, sort of rights. Now, people say, well, you can't do nothing about that. They're changing up all the laws. Oh, yes, you can. You can know Jah's law. Notice something. They don't do that with Orthodox Jews. Why is that? They don't run around like, I mean, no, they'll pick up guns if they have to, even the Orthodox Jews. But no, they've learned, you understand, know what, what we have turned our backs on. You see what I'm saying? What we have turned on. And, and when you study Deuteronomy uh, 28, chapter 28, verses 15 to 16, it explains that the stranger who is amongst you, that's these same Jews. They got some black blood. Some of them are a little bit of black blood, you know, in them. Because they were the strangers amongst us shall rise up very high. So they didn't steal it from us as some of these overzealous, you know, brothers out there might um, word it. And, and, and that's doing injustice. They didn't steal it from us. You say they stole our identity. They stole our heritage. No, we put it down. We turned our backs. It's like, a, it's, like, it's like a lot of foolish niggas. It's just like what the prosperity so-called pimping black churches are doing and all the rest of these counterfeit and frauds are doing the same thing right now. You see, they see what Jah says, but they believe the world even more than they believe Jah. They believe the world even more. So they basically have put down the blessing, have picked up a curse, and they're going to pay for it unless they repent. They're going to pay for it unless they repent. You understand? So right here about frame, um, go to Psalm 94 and 20. So when we saw this episode, it was disturbing. It was really, I mean, but it wasn't like it, it was strange that we, we didn't know this was going on already. But, but seeing these two kind of stories, one fictional, right, and then, well, the other one with, with JFK, I think it's also a setup too. You know, they, they've been after the, the Kennedy family, and if you know who I'm talking about, they, they live. Really, 
live backwards is evil, or they're evil. You know what I mean? They're, they're evil of manati, the evil manati, the evil man nutties. You understand? The evil man nutties, they're the ones who actually behind that because it's an old-time vendetta. So get the video, Who Killed JFK, Who Killed RFK. Check out the, our vids page, and or you can check it out on, 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 the, on the YouTubes. It's out there, and you'll begin to see the different players that most likely somewhere behind the scene or behind all of that. You know, and you can always tell. Whenever a white man or a European of some standing stands up for the truth, they treat that European or white man just like a nigger. Notice that. They, they, they do the same thing. No, no different. Even in the, the fictionalized so-called um, Law and Order episode, every time that they've taken away um, children from almost the majority, let's say it's like this, the majority of times, it has been black and Hispanic, black and Hispanic um, 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 couples or black and Hispanic families in which they have framed mischief by a law. You see, under under Jaws, under Jaws heaven and on Jaws on, on Jaws earth, there is nothing nowhere that says that we cannot live and govern ourselves by our own God given laws. And if one wants to prevent us from sovereignty, well, you know, that's where law enforcement comes in. So we began to think, we began to say, wait, you know, there's a reason for the season. You know, there's a reason why things are the way that they are, but that thing that is a curse, you know, even the black-on-black -black violence, that thing that is a curse is the proper repentance and proper spirit spiritual realignment comes, that very same thing which is a which has been a curse becomes a blessing. You understand? But no one is no one is, is, is speaking these words. You see the word has to be spoken. And people say, Oh, what you mean? Are you talking about these same these same gangbangers and the rest of them are gonna repent and come to Jah? Maybe not all of them, but I'm sure you know, if they know that there's a way out of chaos, many will take that up. And this is one of the reasons why we want to put it out like that to the gangbangers and the rest of y'all. Put down the gun and pick up Torah. Pick up the Bible. You know, and learn who you are. Learn your identity before it's too late. Because, you know what's so interesting? With even a lot of the so-called wealth that the black community has had over, over the years, Look how it has been mismanaged, misspent, you understand? Spent on things like sneakers. And, 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 and you know, this is, not just sneakers, but that's one of the big craze things. That's idolatry, bro. You understand? And, and sisters, that's idolatry. It's not saying that you can't buy a good pair of sneakers or whatnot like that. But come on, don't you know something is wrong? Because nobody's telling you that something is wrong and telling you rationally, you understand? And allowing you to, you know, decide for yourself. You understand? Because either way, you're going to see the consequences. You make the right action, you're going to see the consequences. You make the wrong action, you're going to see the consequences. So you decide, like Moses said, I put before you two ways. You understand? A way of life and a way of death. Choose you this day who you shall serve. Shall you serve Jah, the true and living God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, or are you going to keep serving the, the, the evil man nutties? You know what I'm saying? You're going to keep serving the evil man nutties. Their time is coming. And if you still are going along with the flow, you're going along to be along, or, or you're getting in where you fit in, guess where you're going to fit in after that? Think about it. You understand? Know oh, better yet, let me tell you. You're going to fit in in Gehenna. You understand? Know You're going to bond with those same devils. You're going to really find out that the devils are real. You understand? Know the Satans are real. And you're going to be thinking, my pastor told me that only the, the devil and his angels end up in, in, in the fires of hell. See, that's because your pastor was a fraud. You know what I mean? And somebody told you, check them out. 
check them out. Go to your past with some of these questions and, and, and see what he says. Oh, he don't know. It, it, it's not about what race you are or whatever. They're, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. Well, if it's not about what race you are, how come still there are all these laws, you understand, and there's all these situations that constantly come up racist, racist, racist. It's the same old how to make a slave. Come on. I mean, yeah. Kumbaya, right? Obama's the president, right? But, but what has changed? You know what has changed? White folks going out there, they bought up more guns, they bought up more ammo, they're adding another, another level to their underground, their underground shelter, and, and they're preparing for whatever, while the rest of you Negroes and, and lost sheep are preparing for the slaughter and don't even know it. That's what we say, Whitney's death and even Jackson's death. You know, these are just show that, that that generation is over. We have an opportunity to come out of the wilderness. Forty years is over. That is the time. In fact, in the biblical equation, the 70 years is already, is already fulfilled. But Psalm 94, Psalm 94, verse 20, where it says, Shall the throne of iniquity... That's speaking about these Satanists and uh, evil man nuts. You understand? Um, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Shall they have fellowship with I and I, the children of the true and living God? Shall they be like brothers to us? Are we brethren? Of course not. You may be my color, but you're not my kind. You understand? You're not my kind because you like to get down full swine. What you mean? You're not my kind. It says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law. That verse right there is so significant, you, you need to highlight it. You know what I'm saying? You need to highlight it. We're going to call this one right here, um, we're going to call this one right here, Rastafari, we call it Rastafari law. Rastafari law. We call it Jah law. Let's call it Jah law. You understand? Ja law, right? And enforcement. Because one thing we notice is that their law could do nothing unless they had ones who were dedicated. You understand? Stress on dead. You understand? But ones who were dedicated to enforce these laws. And, and what, do the, what do the police officers say? Yeah, I, I know it's, it does, it's not really fear, but that's the law. What can we do about it? Now, we have been given gracious, a gracious law by our Godfather and King of Kings. You understand? By the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, if you please. All right? And we turned our back on this time and time again. Look at the history of Israel from almost its, 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 its early days. John delivered them out of such, out of such um, bondage, you know what I'm saying, in Egypt. It's just like us vis-a-vis -vis the king of kings, Haile Selassie. And instead of the pastors and preachers acknowledging that, they did a about the face with Martin Lucifer King. They did a, a about the face, you understand, and went down to Egypt, you understand, and went back to Massa for what? Economics. What did King say? You've given us a check and it's marked insufficient funds. So it was all about the money. So why are they so upset, these old-time hypocrites, that the youths are out there trying to get money any way that they can. It's about money. It's about showing that, look, look what I got. Because that's what the parents were about. But no, these are a bunch of hypocrites, like with Cosby and the rest of them. You know, you want to say, oh, Shaniqua, and have these sort of names and so forth and so on, while he has Fat Albert and all these people. He's the be the body, the be the body, the boo. And, oh, oh, that wasn't that. Oh, that was funny, right, because you're a comedian. Right, but but the but, but the but the so-called ghetto people are are so starving to find their true names again. You understand that that desperation even makes them pick up whatever they can pick up from the atmosphere and put it together. Just anything other than a goddamn motherfucking slave name. 
oh, some people are offended by that. Well, that's just the truth. You understand? It's a fence to have to deal, you understand, with these evildoers day in and day out. But with God's patience, we will overcome. But this area of Scripture is very interesting because let's, let's bring this up here, put a little mark right here. So we have Jah's law enforcement because the law cannot enforce itself. All right? The law cannot enforce itself. You know, it's like if, 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 if um, I mean, I mean how, 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 how blunt, you know, how blunt can the examples be? You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, <laughs> the law does not enforce itself. You understand? That's what it says, to keep, when it says to keep jaw law, keep basically means to enforce it. It's like the Sabbath. You understand? It's like we look at the Sabbath law. When the, when the, when the Sabbath law, let's go to, you see, because the Sabbath is where you begin, young brothers and sisters, you understand? Um, because there's a lot of the sisters out there turning tricks and doing a lot of, you know, God awful things. You know what I'm saying? And everybody looks down on these people who, by by whatever circumstances or so called um, Babylonian faith, law, I call it lost sheep faith. You know what I mean? Because if we, if you really don't know who you are, you understand? If you don't, if you don't know, then you lost because you don't even know who you are. You know. But if we look in um. The Sabbath law right here, the Sabbath law right here says in uh, 20, uh, Exodus chapter 20, it says, um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now, if we're working six days, five to six days, and keeping the Sabbath, knowing who we are, brothers and sisters, we prosper. We will prosper. That's one thing about, you know, I said this to others, that one thing about we as black folks, you got to recognize this. You know what I mean? By hook or by crook, we're going to eat. I'm talking about we black folks here. I can't, we can't speak for every other tribe. There's some tribes in Africa that like us. They're going to they're gonna eat. Others are, like, lazy. They're going to probably wait for somebody to come along or something like that. But we're going to eat. You know what I'm saying? We're going to find a way. You can see that even in the Katrina thing. You understand? Where ones were trying to, and they say, oh, they're looting and so forth and so on. They're dying. You know what I mean? What you expect a person to do? You understand? You know, you know, you know, because suicide, right? They say suicide, suicide is, 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 is a crime against God, right? So for us not to do something, if no one ever told these youths who they are, or where they're from, and never brought them up in the in the admonition of God, and they find themselves on the street with all sort of wickedness going on, what do you think they should do? They should run to the nearest monastery, right? And what monastery? They're going to see all these pimping churches up and down, and, and what they're going to do. You understand know what they're going to do, and, and how the church is going to help them. You know what I'm saying? They're going to say, well, you know what? You have a problem? Come back Sunday. You'll be dead by Sunday, right? Anyway. Um, and, and that's taking up a lot of valuable real estate, too, in the neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? But those are issues we've talked about before. But one more point about the black church. You know where the two places that have the most churches? This surprised me, but it shouldn't be so surprising. The two places that have most churches, Jamaica and Brooklyn. Jamaica and Brooklyn in the black neighborhood have, have the most churches per Square blocks and per per congested area, you know. And I be saying we're family, but some don't want to want to get it. I'm Jamaican, you Yankee. <laughs> you on that white man shit? You know, what I mean, you still on that shit? You know, you don't get hurt like that. Verse ten is says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger with, with, that is within thy gates. Now, notice something right here. That means that let us, I won't say pretend, I won't say imagine, I'll say let's vision in the future. We're in our own promised land. We've come through a lot of stuff. We had to wash our garments almost literally in the blood of Yehoshua, 
the blood of Yeshua, you understand, the lamb, and, and, and we finally made it, right? So this is, this is, this is, this is my gates, you know, I got, this, this is my gates, it's a couple of acres or whatever like that, and, you know, I have, what, what it says, I have, uh, I have, I have son, daughter, man, servant, man, man, servant, maid, servant, cattle, stranger, a stranger's within my gates. A stranger comes to me and says, yo, um, Yadin, Wyndham, I'd like to spend some time with you. You know, I said, hey, no problem. Now, you should know how we, you know, we Hebrews, so how we, how we, how we get down, how we get up, how we move forward, you know what I mean, and how we, how we make our, you know, how we live our lives, right? So, say the manservant, you know, I, I'm paying this person, you know what I mean? Or the person living off of my, you know, not dying, but, you know, living under my roof. You know, when it says thou, it's speaking to the man of the house. And the manservant says, well, it's a Sabbath, but he can, he can do his own little stuff on a Sabbath. He's like, you go do your... You know, you do your Sabbath thing, remember Sabbath, whatever. I'm going to do my own little something here. You know, don't worry about me. I won't make no noise or whatever. Question, what should I do? Should I say, okay, or I should say, nada, and if he does that, kick you out? What do you think? Well, of course, if I'm, if I'm keeping that and Josh says this, then you will become a curse to me. You understand? And, and because your energy now, you, that, that person who is under your authority, you understand? That's not, and come on, niggas, get off that authority stuff. We know about authority. You understand? If we're in a gang and I'm, you know, I'm the G, I'm the leader, you understand? Or if you are the G, you're the leader, whatever like that, you know, I'm not going to just disrespect you or you just disrespect me. You know how that gets down, Right? Right? You know what I mean? And, and that is not really a law. It's more a custom and tradition, but it functions like law. Think about it. So it's not like we don't know about a sense of law and order. It's that we don't have our right law and order. And this is why I said from the very get-go, out of the gate of recording this, put down the heat for a moment and pick up the Torah. I said for a moment. You understand? You know, bury it, stash it, hide it, whatever like that. You know, but put down the heat for, you know, if you need it, you know, have access to it. You know, because, you know, telling folks that, that, that they should just be, you know, at the, at the mercy, you know what I mean? Because you, you got to know your situation, you know, and different people's situation are different. You understand? But be wise as serpent, harmless as dove. My point right here is that if this is the Sabbath law, that means that you don't do any work, nor your son, nor your daughter. Now, suppose your children say, oh, come on, Dad, you know, we've been keeping the Sabbath all these years, and now I want to do a little something on my own. Huh? 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 What, what you said? See, see, now people say, you're being too strict. Tell me something. When these Babylonians scratch their ass and then write a new law, or, or, or say, you know, make up a new law, which you have nothing to do with. All they tell you, this is what the law is, and if you violate it, either you get a fine, you get a penalty, you go to jail, and this is the law. I understand. You say, but I didn't know that this was the law. What they tell you, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But then they want to abolish John law? You see, see, by abolishing God's law, guess what they do? They abolish our right to rule. Think about it. And making us believe, you know what I'm saying, through these uh, um, Reverend um, Pork Chop and Pastor Bacon, you know, believing through these cats out there, you know what I'm saying, it's just, it just, it just, it just adding insult to the already existing, to the already existing um, injury. But we wanted to say a little word, just a word of, of, about this. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to say a word about this because um, some might want, want to know, like, okay, what's all the focus? You know, what's the, all the focus on Torah? I mean, it's just learning about things in the past. That's what you think? 
Yeah, you know, he says, I am he who was, is, and will be. You understand? I change not. You understand? So I don't know what, what misunderstanding you have. You understand? The reason why it's not in effect is because we, the so-called elect or the children, you understand, the, 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 the lost sheep, are not doing it. We're choosing to allow ourselves to be ruled by a 2,000-year-old caveman. Think about that for a moment. By a 2,000-year-old cave, what was it, 2012? In our calendar, what is it, 7,504 years. And that's just the late calendar. That's just the calendar for, for, for this age. We're not talking about the calendar for previous ages. So we, we allow ourselves to be ruled by them. The same ones who we know still harbor intense racist and racial animosity. So now what they're doing, now they, they've already managed to divide the, the, the men, the black man and the woman, you understand, divide and traumatize the black woman severely, you understand, and, 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 and kill, slay, castrate the black man to the best of their ability. Now they want to take the children, you understand. Now they, they, they want to, and, 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 they, and so far they are doing a, a satanic enough of a job at it. So seeing these kind of um, uh, the news on one hand and then seeing a so-called fictionalized story on the next hand and saying, wait, what do these things have in common? Yovas. And see, the Bible says that John will not do anything unless he first warns his, his, his servants, the prophets. He will inform his servants, the prophets. We're not coming with any new prophecy. These things, we're finding and confirming them, they're already in the scripture. You understand? And unfortunately, we couldn't hear it from um, Reverend Bacon and Pastor Porkchops. We, we, you know, they were too busy, you understand, um, um, <laughs> molesting deaconess such and such and, and, and having sex with so-and-so's wife, so forth. Not all of them. You understand? If they're not doing that, they still are not preaching this word, you understand, in full by beginning off telling the black people, my people, you are not Gentiles. You know who you are? Do you know who you are, people? And, and no church, none of these guys will do this. And all this evidence right here, the Valley of the Dry Bones is an excellent book, people, because this explains the conditions that face black people in America. You wonder why all the youths are running around with skull and bones on their shirt, right? Right? Why, why are they running around with skull and bones on their shirt? Because they know they're dead. They know they're dead. And you know why they're dead? Because nobody has, has, has given them the light of the truth. You understand? The real light. Oh, you know what you're telling them? You've got to go to school. You've got to get a good job. And then you tell them out the next side of your mouth, you ain't nothing, you're too dark, your hair's too nappy, or something else. You know, time is running out for all that, for all that BS. Check this, check this book cover. I, I mentioned this book cover before, but check this book out. This is Dick Gregory's book. In fact, I wish we could get some copies of this, maybe see if there's a scan out there somewhere. Um, Dick Gregory's Bible Tales. This is a sweet book. This is a really sweet book. In fact, this is one of the first books outside of the scripture, you understand, like the first books about the scripture, I recall, and not maybe reading, but really getting it. This book right here, this book right here, this is such a down-to-earth, you know, a down-to-earth volume, but that helps you see the higher heights. This is Dick Gregory's Bible Tales. This is a really, really, you know, a really, really <laughs> It's a really, really good book. And, you know, they talk about, oh, niggas have to still be mammying it and doing the, 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 the shuffling, stepping Fletcher and dress up in drag, mocking the mother like the Tyler Perry and all this, so forth. And, yeah, great for his fame and whatever like that. But, but the, 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 the bad, the negative, you understand, the negative poor trails of black people ain't doing us no good. 
even if a nigga got a pocket full of money and he used to live in his car and be homeless and now he sold himself out and he got all of this and he's making money making a mockery of 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 I and I. I mean I like some of his some of his work and some aspects of, of what he's does as a producer, so forth and so on. But overall, you understand for his position to whom more is given, more is required. You understand? I think some things he needs to put down and, and, and other things he's doing, he's doing a little bit too much. All that, all that, um, all that drag shit, you know, like he, he's showing you the black woman. What kind of, that's just another Flip Wilson. You know, there's other teachers that go into that in a little bit more detail. So for right now, brothers and sisters, um, I, I want to just leave you with this, you know, put down you know, I say put it down. I understand what I mean. You understand? And, and try to see if you can get some of your, your homies, too, to understand this. You know, call some ceasefires, man. Now, okay, <laughs> I know there's probably, there's probably some, there's probably Mr. Smith, there's probably the agents, you know, amongst you. You're going to have to work that out. You understand to the best of your ability. Because you got to work it out sooner or later. It's better you work that out than they work you out. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a word to the wise should be sufficient. Some say, hey, you shouldn't be saying this kind of stuff. But John says this right here. Before we um, close out this, sec this section right here, let us just turn to this. Let us just turn to this um, Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. And I know you might have heard it, the Israelites, the other Israelites, you know, our brothers, but, you know, in my father's house there are many mansions, you know, there's 12 tribes for a reason, you know, and, you know, be that as it may. Right here it says, the spirit, the, the filling of the spirit, Ezekiel chapter 2, and he said to me, son of man, stand upon thy feet. Stand upon thy feet, and I will speak to thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake to me, and set me upon my feet. And I heard him that spake to me. And here's where the prophet is commissioned. Verse 3, And he said to me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. In other words, Knowing thyself, Israel. Let's just put this up here. You understand? Israel, right? Israel. Some of y'all put Israel, but it's R A E L. Israel. You understand? Equals lost blacks in the West, primarily. You know, there's others in in the in the other three points, but we need to get our point together. You understand? Our, our point on the compass together. Um, and he said to me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. Verse 3. To a rebellious nation. To a rebellious nation. That means, you know when we say niggas are hard-headed? You know, I can't, you can't talk to these niggas, man. Can't, the nigga ain't listening. He's rebellious. This is a rebellious nation. It's not just one person who's a rebellious. We all got a little bit of that in us. It's part of this generational thing that, first of all, we have to become conscious of before we can get it out of us. You understand? To a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. Check it out. The nation, we as a people, have rebelled against Jah, against Yahweh, against the creator of heaven and earth. Think about that. I'm speaking generationally. That's deep. So when we ask, how come black people are in the situation that we're in? We go with the children of Israel. Why can't you get it? Why can't you? Oh, 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 because you, you, you've been bought off? You understand? To talk that, talk that garbage. You understand? That we're not Israelites? Okay. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even to this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. You know, like, sometimes niggas don't change easily, it's like they have to get crushed. Like a nigga has to get broken, has to get crushed. You know what I'm saying? Before he really, he's like, you know, before he recognizes what he already knew already, he'll tell you that, man, I knew that a long time. And you'd be like, so why are you, oh, 
John says impudent children and stiff-hearted. Not just you, but I, I kind of, yeah. I do send thee to them, and thou shalt say to them, Thus saith Adonai Yahweh, thus saith Adonijah, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So whether niggas like what we're saying in this video or don't, some be like, oh, I ain't glad to him. Whether they hear or forbear. In other words, it, it, Jah is telling us our psychological disposition. You understand? When we go out there and we speak the truth. You understand? Whether on mission or if you just come across a nigga and you're trying to, you know, drop some truth on a nigga. You understand? A little bit of illumination between the clouds. You understand? On his cloudy mind or her cloudy mind. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbid. What it means, whether they will take the Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Hear o Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Whether they will recognize that or not. Whether they will be obedient to it or not. Whether they will hear or forbear. And parentheses says, for they are a rebellious house. You understand? They're a rebellious house. I mean, if, if you don't know niggas are more rebellious than almost any people on the face of the earth, especially to what is really good for them and what is really of them. You understand? Yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. So when all these things come to pass, all the brothers and the sisters out there putting up the videos out there even on the road trying to get this message out that's based on the true word of John, the true word of God. Whether they hear or forbid, they're going to know that somebody tried to give them the divine 411 and they were just ignorant. They were just ignorant. Verse 6, for thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. You know, some of y'all don't want to, want to talk the truth because y'all are afraid. You know, Revelation says that the cowardly end up in Gehenna. The cowardly end up in hell. Think about that. The cowardly. And being cowardly about Jah's things in Jah's ways. God things in God's way. That's why God says, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. What would you be afraid of? Notice something. If you wasn't speaking Jah's word, you would step to that nigga, right? Right? If, it, if it's something else, you look at your girl, you step in your shoe, you kick your car, or something else like that, you step to him, right? You don't care. Police could be right over there. You step to him, right? So why are you being afraid to speak your word? So this is a good question, right? I know. This is a good question. I've asked myself that too. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words, because niggas will talk. You know, <laughs> niggas will cut you with the word. You think the guns, the knives, the bats, all that is something, but the words, oh, you know what I mean? Be not afraid of their words. I don't want to say, say nothing, but you're going to say something, and that means you're not, you, you're not connected with Jah enough. You're still connected to your flesh. You're not connected with the infilling, as it said in the beginning, and the Spirit entered me. That's why Christ said to them, keep praying in that upper room until the Holy Spirit come upon you. You understand? Because when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you understand, you won't be afraid of them. So don't go out there half cocked. Or, you know what I mean, don't take, like I said, a knife to a gunfight or whatever like that, but go prepared spiritually. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though buyers, briars, and thorns be with thee. In other words, though, you know, like, you know, like a flower, a rose that has the thorns, it's very beautiful, but just be careful. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. It's interesting because 2012, December, December, um, uh, what is, 21st, 2012, is Tassus 12 in our Ethiopic calendar, is between Scorpio and, 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 and Sagittarius and the Satar. Scorpio and Sagittarius is a dark rift. So it's just kind of a little, little interesting verse here. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words. Don't be afraid of their words. Niggas will intimidate you with words. Nor be dismayed at their looks. Chad, it's breaking down the nigga to a T. Black folks, niggas will stare at you. Niggas will get angry like they're going to kill you. They're probably feeling that. But remember the infilling of Josh's spirit. 
You understand? Remember, and Jah's word is a fire. So you got the fire. You got the light. You understand? Don't be afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house, although they be rebellious. You understand? Although they be rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words to them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. They're most rebellious of any other people. You understand? Of any other people. You don't have to tell a so-called white man or, or a, a Jebusite or whatever, an Edomite. You don't have to tell them 50, 51,000 times that they're a large sheep of the house of Israel and show them all the evidence that many brothers and sisters have been doing for, for, for countless decades, <laughs> you know, to get niggas. And, and, and see, black folks know that they are in, in their heart of hearts, they know. Because whenever they'll come out with that Jesus or black people in the Bible, you know, they'll, they'll come out with it. But the reason why they run away from it is the responsibility. You understand? They don't want to give their ability to respond to John's call. And John says if you don't want to do that, you're dead. You're dead once, and you'll be dead twice. The second death. The second death is what people should be worrying about. You understand? Really. You, you know, really. You know, Whoa, yo, whoa, yo. It says, but, it says, uh, verse 7, And thou shalt speak my words to them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Most, don't take, you know, you could go to a man in Eskimo country and tell him, you know, you're the lost sheep of the house of Israel and the promise of Christ. Is this, and, and he'll get it. And you, and you might not even have no evidence. For these niggas, you show them evidence on evidence, verse, and scripture, books. Show them the white man said it, the black man said it, the Asian man said it. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, Jah is so merciful. You understand? Because